Beneath the red rain, on the planet Alora, summers were dreaded for their relentless red rains. Toxic and unforgiving, the rain painted everything crimson and forced the population indoors. Only the hardy or those with no other choice lived there, isolated, forgotten, immune only if they were among the rare few. Jem was one of those few. She didn't fear the rain. It never harmed her. With her curly auburn hair and piercing green eyes, she stood out starkly among the residents with their washed-out tones. Her family had wealth, but she'd come to Alora on her own, seeking quiet and independence after a sheltered life on a vibrant, bustling world. The rainy season made solitude easy. One murky afternoon, Jem found her pantry bare of anything remotely fresh. Sick of packaged, preservative-laden meals, she shrugged into her boots and raincoat and set out into the storm, determined to find something, anything, that would taste of life. The streets were empty except for the toxic rain running in rivulets along the cracked pavement. The small, barely-stocked market held nothing close to her cravings. Sighing, she settled on some jerky and a handful of artificial fruit snacks. As she headed back, she spotted someone in the downpour, a girl about her age, soaked to the bone and shivering. She was drenched without a coat or umbrella. Jem's heart twisted at the sight. Stepping forward, Jem held her umbrella out to the girl, who shook her head, clearly accustomed to looking out for herself. But Jem insisted, passing the umbrella into her hands and shrugging off her own jacket to place over the girl's shoulders. Are you okay? Jem asked, almost shouting over the sound of the downpour. The girl managed a small nod. I was just on my way over there. She gestured towards a narrow alley leading into the old city center. Jem's curiosity peaked. She offered to walk her back, and they slipped through the streets together, the rain pouring around them. They arrived at an abandoned old theater, the girl's makeshift home. Inside, it was a world of its own, dry and filled with the haunting echo of a forgotten melody that seemed to seep from the walls. Jem glanced around, surprised by the paintings on the walls, canvases filled with images that pulsed with raw emotion and painted in eerie red hues that Jem guessed came from the very rain outside. Did you make these? Jem asked in awe. The girl nodded, a small smile breaking through. It's all I can do to get through the summer. It helps pass the time. Do you have a name? The girl hesitated. I'm Mira. Jem, she replied, returning the smile. From that day on, Jem and Mira spent every afternoon together in the empty theater, sharing stories and laughter as the rain battered the building from the outside. They spoke of dreams and memories. Mira confided that her father's oppressive rule was why she'd ended up on her own. Jem told her of her own desire to escape from her family's strict expectations. In their shared confidences, they found a bond neither had anticipated. As the days turned into weeks, their friendship deepened. They spoke of everything under the sun, discovering in each other a reflection of their own dreams and fears. One night, as the rain outside turned the world a fiery red, Mira asked quietly, Jem, what made you come here of all places? Jem hesitated. I wanted freedom, a chance to live for myself for once, and I think I think I found more than I bargained for. What do you mean? Jem looked at Mira her green eyes bright against the muted colors of the theater. Maybe, maybe I came here to meet you. They sat in silence, the air thick with unspoken words. Then, Jem reached out, her hand brushing against Myra's. Mira looked up, her golden eyes filled with a question Jem answered without a word. The rain outside fell harder, a constant rhythm against the roof but it couldn't penetrate the warmth they found in each other. Inside the abandoned theater, with faded paintings and whispered music, they had made a world all their own. Their story became one of hope, resilience, and friendship that grew into something more, 
surviving the harshest summer of Alora, under the red rain that painted the world, while they found in each other a reason to stay. The summer wore on, and the rain became even more relentless, as if the planet itself were testing them. Jem and Mira fell into a rhythm, meeting every day at the theater. They'd trade rations, laughter, and memories, finding new ways to entertain each other amidst the isolation and gloom. Together, they painted the theater walls with vibrant colors to cover the rust and peeling plaster. They filled the darkened space with life, transforming the abandoned hall into a world of their own. One evening, when the rain was particularly fierce, Mira was waiting for Jem by the backstage door. She looked more pensive than usual, her eyes shadowed. When Jem arrived, Mira took a deep breath and finally spoke of her past, a story she hadn't shared with anyone, not even Jem. I've never told you this, but my father. Mira paused, glancing at the painted walls as if to draw strength from them. He was a very powerful figure here, and when things got difficult, he turned to darker choices, hurting others to get what he needed. Jem reached out to steady her friend's trembling hand. You don't have to tell me if it's too much, Mira. Mira shook her head. No, I want to. I want you to understand why I ended up here alone. He didn't care for people the way he cared for his power. When I told him I wanted to leave, he, he threatened to expose me to the rain, to make sure I'd never leave. Jem's heart ached. She couldn't imagine how anyone could treat Mira with such coldness. But you escaped. You're here now. You're safe with me. Mira looked up, her eyes softened. That's why meeting you felt like a miracle, Jem. I thought I was alone, that I'd always be alone. Jem didn't hesitate. She pulled Mira into a hug, wrapping her arms around her tightly. They stood in silence, their hearts beating together as they listened to the rain battering the world outside. Days passed, and with each one, their connection deepened. Jem brought small comforts to the theater, cozy blankets, candles, books she'd read a hundred times. Mira introduced Jem to her hidden art supplies, pigments she'd scavenged or made herself, brushes fashioned from stray fibers, and they spent hours creating, dreaming, and confiding in each other. One evening, after a rare break in the rain, Jem spotted the first sunset in months. She rushed to find Mira, who was sitting in the theater, lost in a painting. She was working on a mural of the two of them standing side by side, facing the world together. When Mira noticed her, Jem motioned excitedly for her to follow. Together, they climbed the crumbling fire escape to the roof. From there, they watched as the sky transformed into a riot of color, deep reds and golds blending into violet. It was a quiet reminder of something bigger, something untouched by the rain and struggles of Alora. Jem reached for Myra's hand, and they stood together, fingers intertwined, watching as the sunset bathed the city in warmth. This is beautiful, Mira murmured, gazing at the sky. Jem squeezed her hand. Yes, it is. In that moment, with the sun dipping below the horizon and the colors painting the world anew, they knew that no matter what hardships awaited them, they would face them together. For the first time, hope flickered in their hearts, a warmth strong enough to withstand even the coldest rain of Alora. The world around them was harsh and uncertain, but they had each other. And in that, they found all the strength they needed. As the rains returned and the colors faded from the sky, Jem and Mira retreated back to their sanctuary in the theater, carrying with them the memory of that rare, perfect sunset. The air was thick with the sweet scent of fresh rain, and they felt more bonded than ever, strengthened by the sense of possibility they'd glimpsed together. Life on Alora continued to challenge them, but Jem and Mira were resourceful. They scoured the city for forgotten treasures, salvaging bits of beauty from the ruins and decay. Old books, scraps of fabric, broken jewelry, and mirrors. 
Each item became a piece of their private world, a world crafted from hope and resilience. Together, they made the theater their own, a secret place of warmth and color. One day, while sorting through her belongings, Jem found a bundle of letters she had kept from her family on Yaltai's. She hadn't shared much about her past, and she had rarely spoken of her family. The letters were filled with tales of Yaltai's never-ending sunshine, beaches lined with shimmering crystals, and gatherings with family and friends. But these familiar comforts were also reminders of a life Jem had left behind, a life she felt had never truly understood her. As Jem shared the letters with Mira, she finally confessed, I never felt like I belonged there. I left because I was searching for something, something more real, something that would make me feel alive, like I had a purpose beyond the endless sunshine and wealth. Mira listened, her gaze soft and understanding. I understand that feeling, Jem. You and I both came here to this rainy world for our own reasons. But sometimes, what we think is an escape is just a new beginning. They stayed up late that night, sharing their dreams and fears. Jem spoke of her yearning for adventure, to find meaning outside the constraints of privilege. Mira, in turn, shared her deep love of Alora's hidden beauty, how despite its dangers, she found solace in its strange landscapes and the secrets they held. Each revelation felt like a bridge between them, closing any lingering distances. Their bond grew, and soon it was hard to remember a time they hadn't been side by side. When Mira began working on a large mural that stretched across the entire back wall of the stage, Jem offered to help. They spent hours painting, drawing inspiration from their adventures, filling the mural with strange creatures, wild landscapes, and at its heart, two figures hand in hand. But as the painting neared completion, Jem sensed a familiar restlessness growing inside her. She began to wonder if they could leave Alora together and explore the world beyond its borders. Her heart ached at the thought of parting from Mira, yet she couldn't shake the desire for something more. One evening, while Mira was adding the final touches to their mural, Jem took a deep breath and shared her dreams of traveling far, seeing the places she had only ever read about. Mira listened, her eyes reflecting both understanding and sadness. I've always wanted to see the world beyond Alora, but I never thought I'd find someone willing to go with me. It's dangerous, Jem. We have no idea what lies out there. Are you sure? Jem nodded. As long as I'm with you, I am. The decision to leave wasn't easy. Alora was their home, their refuge. Yet, they both felt that it was time to face the unknown, armed with nothing but courage and their unwavering trust in each other. They spent weeks preparing, gathering supplies, making maps, and bidding quiet farewells to the theater and the city they'd come to know so well. On the morning of their departure, they stood at the edge of the city, backpacks filled with provisions, hearts pounding with anticipation. The rain had stopped for the first time in days, and a faint glow broke through the thick clouds. They turned back once, taking in the silhouette of the theater against the gloomy sky, the place that had given them so much more than shelter. Hand in hand, they took their first steps beyond Alora's borders, venturing into a world unknown. The path ahead was full of mystery and peril, but together, Jem and Mira were ready to face whatever came their way, knowing that they had each other to light the way forward.